So good morning or good afternoon. If you're watching it in the afternoon, thank you for coming together. I think it's important for us to continue to come together, uh, even if it's in a different way. One of the things about morning assembly that I love is that we get all of those grades together. We come together and we know one another and we share our stories together. So I'm glad that you're tuning in. Uh, this week, we'll celebrate uh, what we're going to do next week, which is the most important week of the church year. And that's what I want to talk about. Um, do you all know what week that is? And it's not spring break, although that is next week as well. It's Holy Week, the holiest week of the church year. And what I want to do is talk to you about the different services that take place during Holy Week uh, and ask you to think about them as those days come up. Uh, but before we start, we'll start with our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you love us as your children. Bless our school, its faculty, staff, students, families, and friends. Bless our church, its priests, leaders, staff, and all its members. Open our hearts to accept and serve others with compassion and respect. Enrich our minds with your wisdom so that we may learn to love and love to learn. Help us to excel and grow in grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior, Teacher, Lord, and Friend. Amen. So, next week is Holy Week, and it starts on Sunday. I know we have our service here at the school, uh, but Holy Week starts Sunday with Palm or Passion Sunday. Uh, Palm Sunday is that time uh, where we celebrate that Jesus uh, came uh, down uh, the Mount of Olives uh, into Jerusalem and people were so excited. Uh, the King of Kings was coming in Jerusalem and uh, they uh, were so excited that they uh, put down their robes and they waved palms and uh, it was like they would treat a king coming into, uh, into Jerusalem and that's what we celebrate. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on that Palm Sunday, uh, not knowing if people are going to be able uh, to come to the other services during Holy Week, uh, we also tell the whole story of the Passion, of what happens once he gets into Jerusalem. Uh, but I'm going to wait and uh, save those uh, for Thursday and Friday and then uh, Sunday. Um, so then Thursday. Thursday is called Maundy Thursday. And the word Maundy is kind of a gibberish word. It comes from the word mandatum, uh, which uh, means commandment. Uh, and it uh, comes from the fact that Jesus, uh, having washed uh, his disciples' feet, uh, gives them a new commandment that they love one another the way that Jesus loved them. And so on Monday, Thursday, we do several things because a lot's going on in the story. Uh, we gather uh, and we have a special meal together. Uh, Jesus gathered his, his loved ones knowing that, um, that he was going to be arrested soon. Uh, and that it was Passover, and he had a Passover meal uh, with them. But uh, during that meal, he took the bread and wine, and he said, when you guys come together, uh, take this bread and take this wine and know that I am with you. Uh, and when you gather together, do this in memory of me. And every time uh, we have our uh, K through five service or our K through two service or our three through five service and we break bread and wine together, we remember uh, this moment and then uh, what this moment points to, what Jesus did for us. Uh, and so that is celebrated on Monday, Thursday. Uh, and then sometimes we wash each other's feet. And you think about 2,000 years ago, and um, they didn't wear Nikes or, um, or closed-toed shoes. They wore sandals, and where they walked was pretty dirty. And so for Jesus uh, to wash their feet shows uh, that Jesus uh, wasn't like other kings, uh, that Jesus came to serve. Uh, it was something a servant would do. And that, uh, when Jesus says, love one another the way that I've loved you, uh, he wants us to love like a servant loves, that, uh, that we would love uh, in care and concern for others. Uh, and so think about what it would feel like to have Jesus washing your feet on that day. And then that day also is when, um, when we think about Jesus after that meal going into the garden. Uh, it's, it's where he was arrested, but it's also where he went into that garden to pray. And I'm pointing my hand over that way to the side chapel because I know you've seen that stained glass uh, 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 window that has Jesus in the garden praying to God, uh, praying for strength um, and uh, that he would do what, what God has called him to do, that he'd be willing to do uh, what needs to be done. 
Um, and so we celebrate all of that on Thursday. And then Good Friday. Uh, and one of the th questions I get almost every year is why do they call it Good Friday if Jesus died on Good Friday? Um, there's a couple things. One, I think it's Good Friday because of all the love that God has for us, that God had love that was beyond anything we could imagine, that God had so much love that he was willing to give his son uh, over to death on a cross, that Jesus loved us so much uh, that he was willing uh, to go all the way, even unto death for us, that uh, he poured out everything he could for us. Um, and that uh, is what I... What I uh, connect with on Good Friday. Uh, but the real reason it's called Good Friday is that the word for good originally uh, was a word that meant more Holy fr Friday. So think of it as Holy Friday. Um, but on that day, we remember, uh, we remember Jesus' death and that he was willing to die for us. Um, and we leave it um, uh, with the heaviness and a, and a sadness. Uh, but we know that that's not the end of the story. And so uh, all around the globe, people gather either on Saturday night. Uh, and when they gather on sa Saturday night, uh, the church is still dark. Uh, and they light a, a, a flame uh, and they come into the church and they tell the story of, of God who created us and uh, God who led his people out of slavery in Egypt uh, through the parting of the sea. Uh, they talk about a God who sent all of those prophets uh, uh, that, uh, that never left us alone, a God that's always been working for us uh, and a God that continued to work for us uh, all the way through the cross uh, to Easter morning. And then after we tell those stories, the lights will come on and we'll ring our bells uh, and we'll say that word that we've been waiting to say uh, because Jesus Christ is alive. He is risen and we'll celebrate. Uh, and then all around the globe, people will gather on Sunday morning as well, uh, already uh, excited because we know that Jesus is alive, uh, that the tomb was empty. And so we will um, come and we'll say those joyful words, that hooray word that we've been waiting to say, uh, and we'll celebrate that it didn't end with the sad part um, of the story that we told on Friday, um, uh, but that it always ends, it always ends. Uh, with a God who is more powerful uh, than death, a God who is more loving than anything in this world, and the power of that love and that hope. And we make our bold song. Um, and so that's what we will go through this coming week. And so while you're on spring break, I ask you on Sunday, uh, Palm Sunday, and on Monday Thursday, and on Good Friday, and on Easter Day, to think about all of those parts of the story uh, that are our story. So, uh, so we'll do that together. And now I'd like to celebrate birthdays. So if it's your birthday this week or it will be your birthday next week during, uh, during spring break, uh, I invite you to know um, that this prayer is for you. So let us pray. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them where they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes understanding, be with them all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And to you celebrating birthdays, may the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Now let's keep our prayer hands together as we pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Most loving God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day, for the signs of spring, for this week that we are about to walk through, for all the things that you have done and continue to do for us, for knowing that there is nothing more powerful than you and your love. Be with those who are sick or sad or hurting, be with those who we can't see but are important in our lives. Be with those people who are doing brave work, the doctors and the nurses and the care providers. Be with all those who are making decisions and actions to keep people safe. And we also pray for those prayers that are on our hearts. For anything we now name, we can say it aloud. 
for our classmates, for our teachers who are working so hard to bring school into our houses, for the other adults in our lives that are helping us learn. I pray for each of you. And I pray this is a rich and meaningful Holy Week. We pray all these prayers in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to send you out with my favorite blessing. Remember that life is short. and We have too little time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be quick to be kind. Make haste to love. And the blessing of God Almighty, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So I pray you all have a rich, rich, and meaningful Holy Week and a joyful Easter.